caught up with David Cassidy on Where Are They Now? And he's still fondly remembered for being part of the famous family that urges to come on and get happy. <laughs> As Keith Partridge, he was the original teen idol, but he wasn't always quite so happy. And these days, he just wants to be understood. David Cassidy joins us now. David, good to see you again. Great to see you too, Kashi. Yeah, thanks for joining us now. You were huge in the 70s. You were so young. What was it like balancing that, that youth with, with fame? Well, you know, you're never prepared for the kind of fame that I had. And um, my life was so focused on the business of David Cassidy that the human being, the person, the young guy who was really still a teenager, uh, had to stop at 19 and when I decided the last world tour I did where I played um, Melbourne Cricket Grounds and you know ran r race course and all those stadiums all over the world I had decided that this was it because I had no life literally and a lot of what I do now is creating a balance in my life I love to work I still love and love to strap my guitar on and go and play and as I do all over but I had none then. I worked 18 hours a day, seven days a week. And I think people's perception of me was very much from the character I played on television, who was 16 years old, and I was actually 23, 24 in the end, still playing 16. Wow, because I, you say, you've said that being David Cassidy came second to playing Keith Partridge. That's a pretty big call, I pretty never big said choice. That. Uh, well, I, I think that if you're referring to the idea of playing David, playing Keith Partridge as opposed to focusing my attention on my own self as most young teenagers and people in their 20s do, you know, we are very self-centered at that time and our careers take us, obviously in my career, it took me all over the world. I'm forever grateful for it. Um, what I needed to do, which I don't, a lot of people perhaps thought it was very brave of me to retire and to stop, but I had the largest fan club in the world and I had done everything in that experience that I could ever do. And in many ways, emotionally and psychologically, I felt very stunted. And mm -hmm. um, it took me a long time to get over, creatively, artistically, professionally, but mostly by spending a good amount of time on the couch I uh, ended up being a very, very happy and, and oh, successful man as a result of it. Uh, right, it writing yeah. the book was that, it's been that, a great ride. Was that that sort of therapy as well? Because you go in in detail about your time at the Partridge family mm. and uh, and the craziness in your life, and uh, and also you talk very fondly yeah. of Susan Day. Now we've always had this view that maybe you were more than just friends. Well, we had a very unique and a very um, close, almost brother and sister relationship that I felt so comfortable with Susan Day that I could be completely myself with. And there are very few people I felt that with. Um, at the time, and it's very difficult now to put it in perspective, but I was really living in a bubble. I couldn't go to restaurants, I didn't go to, I couldn't go anywhere really. And I traveled with a lot of security people around me everywhere I went. And I really felt very close to the people that I worked with on the Partridge family. I loved those days. They, I, I got to write, uh, I got to play music, I got to learn as an artist, as an actor, as a songwriter, a singer. What I got to do in those days, I don't know that anyone has ever been fortunate enough to have the kind of opportunity that I had. And I love the songs, I love the music. Uh, I just wanted people to see me as me as opposed to the character I was playing on mm. television. And I was a lot wilder. The autobiography goes into a lot of detail about where I came from. And my father yeah. left my mother and I when I was three years old, you know. And my dad had an enormous impact on me. He was bipolar, he was manic depressive, and he was alcoholic, and he was a genius. He was absolutely <laughs> creatively the most talented man I ever met in my life. 
and I longed to have a relationship with him. And the more famous I became, the more successful I became, the boy, the son, wanted my father to put his arm around me and say, you know, David, I'm so proud of you. And the opposite happened. My father was oh. resentful. He became very jealous. And um, it created a tremendous riff in, in our relationship, my fame, my success, because he longed for it. He wanted it so desperately. And as an actor, he had achieved, I think, as much credibility. His peers viewed him as the finest theatrical American actor of his time. But people in America knew him, sort of, but they didn't really know him. Um, he never achieved the kind of success and fame. It is a fascinating read. Your autobiography covers so very much. It's called Could It Be Forever? Yeah. It's in stores now. David Cassidy, it's lovely to talk to you. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate uh, your time. Thank you so much. It's great to talk to you all again, and God bless you all in Australia. Thank you, David. Thank you. Yeah.